Hello friends, let's continue exploring the stock markets using pandas and python. This time we're going to look at the short-term interest rates, long-term interest rates. We're going to kind of uh, get the data, prepare it, look at, you know, kind of torture it a little bit to kind of fit uh, our needs, especially to be able to compare them uh, on a chart. That's what I want to do. So again, if you're experienced with this, we've done it a few times, this is going to be uh, too basic for you. But if you're not, this is always a lot of fun. Uh, so welcome to Barrel ML. My name is Manuel Amonati. Sign up for my newsletter at barrelml.com forward slash sign up. And the first thing we're going to do is get data. So uh, we're going to use Yahoo Finance just like we did last time. Uh, simply enter, um, in this case we're going to start with a GSPC. We're going to get the S&P 500. It's always a good comparison to have uh, the S&P 500. And uh, you go to historical data. Get the full range, max. Apply it by hitting the down and then apply button, and finally download. So it's a few steps, but in the end you'll get a file that's gonna be downloaded, and then put that in wherever you're running this uh, notebook. Uh, we also, so let me just scroll up here, and the, this notebook is uh, in uh, the description, so you know you can find it there. We're also going to get the um, the 10 year, so I had to get, I had to be creative here. Um, it's not easy to find everything, so I had to find the, uh, I think it's a TNZ, uh, TNX, which is the uh, uh, CBOE interest rate 10 year. That's going to be our long term. And same thing, uh, go to historical data, get the full range, max, done, apply it, and hit download. And you should have a carrot TNX file. And finally, we're going to do the same thing now for um, the, uh, the short terms. And the only, I had to get creative here, the only short term I could find was uh, the BSV, which is an ETF, so let's see, BSV. It's the Vanguard Short Term Bond ETF, which is a, a mixture of one to five year uh, terms, uh, term bonds, it'll do the trick. And same thing again, go to historical. Get as much as you can. I don't think there's that much. It goes to 2007 in this case, that's fine. Did I hit apply? I don't think I did. Done, that's why I hit canceled. Apply that and hit download again, and you'll have a file BSV. Now, make sure they're all in the same folder where you're running this uh, Jupyter Notebook. I'm gonna open a new job books, just like we did last time. And just in case you're new at this, we, last time I did uh, something very similar but using the S&P 500 and the VIX, another great uh, tool, the Fear Index. Uh, so a fun one to play around with as well. So let's go ahead. Um, I'm going to load up everything in memory. So again, you know, we have Matplotlibs, we have the typical, you know, Pandas, NumPy, we're using Pandas a lot and daytime. Here we are uh, loading uh, the S&P 500, the 10 year, and this uh, BSV from Vanguard. And we are uh, forcing, uh, casting the date field to a date. And finally, we're doing an arbitrary cutoff. And you can play around with this, but we wanna make sure that you know you have the same date range in all of the stocks you're gonna be analyzing. 2016 is a nice one, because it's gonna give us some up and some, you know, and some down uh, uh, markets. So up market, down market, trending market, choppy market, along with uh, cutting them all off. And I'm gonna run this, make sure everything works, it's fine, it should be very fast. And finally, we're gonna double check. There's a print statement that's going to check that everything you uh, uploaded is exact same distance, exact same uh, quantity of rows. So we have uh, 784 for each one of our three uh, stocks, our three products, financial products, I should call them, that we're uh, looking at. So let's plot them out. We'll start with the S&P 500. And here we see we had a trending up market and it started getting, it started getting choppy around, you know, beginning of 2018. Let's look at our, oops, the short terms, the BSVs. And here, right? And let's look at the long terms, the 10 year. There you had it. So uh, there is there is a uh, people think that there's a very predictive 
uh, or at least a very indicative indicator uh, comparing the, the short-term rates with the long-term rates, meaning that if the short-term rates are cheaper or lower than the long-terms, that means the economic outlook is not good. People are, are investing in the long-term and they're avoiding the short-term. If the short-term is really good compared to long-term, people think that we're, you know, we're in roaring times and you know, uh, people are putting their money in the short-term uh, uh, short investments to, get them to maximize that, that, that high short-term rate. You can look at it both ways, right? I'm just kind of repeating what I heard on the street. And again, this is not financial advice. I'm not giving trading advice at all. I'm just kind of playing around and this is kind of what I'm thinking. Okay, so we now have all these uh, plotted in three different charts. Of course, that's not gonna do right. We wanna compare them. So let's compare directly the short and long-term rates by simply plotting them uh, each together on their own scale. So like we did last time, we had, you know, matplotlib, you use the, um, uh, the uh, you create a new axis by calling ax.twinx, and that's gonna tell matplotlib that this, whatever you're adding needs to be on its own, uh, its own scale. So you, that's where you have two y-axis, uh, one with a short and one with a long here. So as you see, we have, it definitely has a little mirror image, but again, you know, you can't compare them because uh, they are on completely different scales and it's gonna pick the lowest point for, uh, for it's kind of, you know, kind of auto arrange them in, in matplotlib. So uh, it's hard to compare. And um, I see I'm, I'm plotting some zero. So let me just remove this zero and see if it changes that chart. Yeah, it does change it a bit, right? But again, same thing, uh, uh, mirror image. Uh, it's, as you can see, my plot label to kind of put the lowest point of whatever chart at the bottom and the highest at the top, and it's gonna auto fit both on their own scales to make it look good. Okay, but we definitely see there is some dancing around going on. But let's see if we can't, you know, uh, compare them a little bit better. So one thing we can do is play with the percentage change and the cumulative change. So let's first start with the percentage change, which I like a lot. So I'm gonna remove the cumulative sum. And percentage change is simply, you know, kind of looking from one point to the next as a time series and saying, you know, how many percent did you move up or down? And it's a way of kind of bringing the scale of different products, if one is in the hundred, one's in the tens, kind of more or less aligned. It's not perfect again, because things do move differently as well. Well, look at that. So uh, we definitely see two zero lines and they're dancing up and down on the zero lines, but you know, very noisy, right? Very hard to see anything. That's why we had the cumulative sum in there. Cumulative sum is gonna kind of take that the percentage change and then add it to the next percentage change, add it to the next, and it keeps adding it up. And it kind of, uh, can, you know, it kind of, um, uh, then kind of shapes it up exactly like it was, uh, like you would see here, right? It's the same shape if you compare it, except now the scales are a little bit closer. It's still not perfect, right? This is, you know, 0 0.02, uh, but this one is a 0.2, right? So still not a perfect comparison, but we're starting to, to bring them a little bit together. And we're starting to see, uh, oh, you know, kind of see how the, uh, the short-term rates kind of going up, short-term and the long-term rates are going up. So people are kind of looking at the longer term. Uh, again, here, looking at the shorter term. So let's see, let's do one more thing. Let's, plot three things on three separate scales. You can do that with matplotlib. It's the same thing as we did before, except now we're calling, you know, you want this one in its own axis and you want this one in its own axis as well, right? So we're gonna start with the S&P 500 and then we're gonna have um, the long and the short, each one on their own. And it makes for a pretty, uh, a pretty nice looking graphic. So I put the, the S&P 500 I'm, I'm putting it with a dash dash, so it'll be a little easier, so dashed line. Uh, and we see the uh, short-term rates are green, the long-term rates are blue. Here it's interesting, well, we can't really say which one is above the other because they're still on their own scales and we, we haven't, you know, kind of uh, normalized them perfectly, but we definitely see a, an inverse direction. One is going up, the long-term is getting more expensive here, that product, and the short-term is getting cheaper, that product, meaning that, you know, it's gonna yield less interest rates. Uh, the interests are going down while the longer term vision is going up. It's kind of, you know, slowly meandering upwards. They both kind of agree. They're both slowly meandering upwards. Uh, the two and the 10 seem to be aligned. And here, right, you know, January, February of this year, 2019, it looks like the, the 10 year rate, the outlook for the 10 year rate is going down, it's getting cheaper. Uh, and the, uh, the, uh, the long term, sorry, the, the, the long term rate is going down, the short term rate is going up. Uh, ever since the beginning of the year. So, you know, 
you, you have to, it's very subjective, so you have to use that information however you want. I would recommend looking at different periods, not just looking at the last two years. We have, uh, the, the, the least data we have is a short-term rates and we have since 2017, so uh, more than 10 years. So play around, look at different periods, have some fun. Uh, you know, the stuff is fascinating. Thanks for watching.